All right, guys. So it's John here with Just Thoughts. Thank you for being here. I finally found a participant that would like to participate. Hey, man, what's your name? Where are you from? Uh, my name is Nico, and I live in New York. New York. That's what's up. Yeah, man. Um, my, fam my, my mother, she was born in New York. That's good to hear. Um, yeah, so I'm in Mississippi, so it's a little bit different culturally. Um, can you tell me a little bit about growing up in New York? Yeah, dude, it's uh, really cold, and it's, we're supposed to get snow tomorrow, and honestly, I hate it. I hate snow, I hate cold, and I can't wait to move out and move down south, brother. <laughs> good to hear. Where do you plan on moving? Uh, I got family in Florida, and I got yeah. family. Um, I know it's not south, but I got family in California, so potentially one of those two. Good to hear. Yeah, I recently I went on a on a road trip and I went to California. It was, you know, absolutely beautiful, hands down one of the best uh, cities or the best states that I've been to. Um, and I I was born in Orlando myself, so that was that's a really interesting thing. Do a lot of people go from New York usually to Florida or California? What what's up with that? Um, I mean, my family was military, so they kind of were in bases all across the country. Like my grandpa was in the army for like 40 years so he's been to like 30 different states and um he honestly he settled in new york uh it's not an air force base anymore where i'm from but so he decided to like start the family up there and then his kids got into the military and they just decided that like florida or california was the place that they liked most and i don't blame them because new york kind of sucks <laughs> yeah yeah no, I, I would imagine i mean you guys have uh areas in new york which are, which are the the heaviestly populated as well as the heaviestly diverse uh areas throughout the united states all right and yeah. so like usually when you have a lot of situations where you have multiple cultures with multiple ethnicities and diversity there's uh bound to be some uh, hostility as well as companionship that's created due to the fact that you're able to see so many different people yeah, man. Um, so if you had the opportunity, right, and you had uh, the, the, the opportunity to speak to somebody that would have the capability of being able uh, to change some of the issues that are currently going on in New York, what do you think you would do? Um, I mean... Like, so for instance, this is one of the problems that I see, right? The same thing that's happening in California where they're having uh, legislation that's being passed that's negatively impacting the majority of the populace due to tax reasons, due to business incentives is happening in New York. So there's like a migration that's happening in California from California to other states like Texas that's happening in New York as well. People are leaving New York and going a little bit more south because it's more beneficial first to their paycheck as well as to their families and long term uh long-term families yeah i mean for sure like new york's got super high taxes uh with everything i recently like graduated from college so now like actually getting into the workforce and experiencing those things for myself um the uh same thing with california though california's got really high taxes and they put a tax on everything so i think that you know a, a lot of like i don't necessarily i don't live i live more in like central new york than compared to like a New York City or a Buffalo or Albany. But a lot of New York is like rural area. But when people think of New York, they only think of like New York City or they think of like sports teams in Buffalo or stuff like that. So I think a lot of the legislation that gets passed is to please those bigger cities. And it leaves the rural communities like in shambles because like that might not necessarily be, it, there's no benefit to like the areas that we live or I live in. Right. And now due to the high taxes, do you guys have a certain minimum wage? Like here in Mississippi, the minimum wage is very, it's real, it's kind of low in comparison if you were in New York. What's the minimum wage there? I think it's 15. I'm not 100% sure. Okay, so that's one of the benefits that um, I would imagine that you guys have in New York in comparison to a lot of places like here in the South. In California, for instance, their minimum wage state regulation is $12 an hour, right? And if you're saying in New York, it's $15 an hour, but the difference between the cost of living is significantly shifted in comparison to if you live in New York or you live in California versus if you live in Mississippi. So for instance, would you have a situation where your cost of living was significantly lower, but your uh, the base pay that people were able to receive was significantly lower at the same time. Yeah, I know that like New York and California definitely have like really high costs of living, and it's I, I don't know if the people are 
there's not as much opportunity to like for growth and to better yourself in certain areas. So now not only do you have a higher cost of living, you also don't have the opportunity to make more money to sustain that life of living. And it just leaves people to either live off the system or they're, they get more money for living off of like welfare checks or things like that than it would be for them to go and get a job somewhere. Right. No, I agree with you. Like, um, access to opportunity um, is becoming relatively scarce depending on where you live and your uh, skill sets that you're able to apply to our capitalist system, right? So if you're right. lacking the majority of the skills that are needed in tomorrow's, the, the future economy, then you're essentially being left behind. And one of the problems that I'm seeing is that we're creating these welfare type states where the majority of people don't necessarily have the skill sets that are necessary to compete in the workforce, right? And so instead of like doing things like that, there's a, a large group of individuals that are thinking, people that are much more intelligent than me and you, obviously, right? Um, that are thinking that um, one of the benefits to being able to create something like a, a basic income or a basic uh, health care or basic tuition um, would give everybody the same uh, ability or the same opportunity to be able to compete uh, in the opportunity for whatever they define as success, right? Um, right. And, and that's one of the things that I think would be beneficial for people that are in our age range, um, especially to talk more about because the majority of people that are older than us don't think that it's going to be beneficial to, uh, to their pockets due to the fact that the majority of the money would be being taken from their pockets. Um, so yeah, man, if you had the opportunity, would you pass legislation for a basic income? Uh, dude, I don't know if I would, I mean, I don't know if I would necessarily try to pass for like a basic income. One of the biggest things that I see that's an issue is like, I was fresh out, recently fresh out of college. And granted, you know, there's a pandemic going on and there's a lot of layoffs across the entire United States, not just New York, which I get that 100 percent. But <clears throat> like I graduated with a bachelor's degree. I graduated college early. Like I was on my way, like set myself up for success. And now you're going out and you're applying for jobs and they're looking for two, three, four, five years minimum of experience, but they're not willing to give that experience. So you're in the catch 22 situation where you can't get a job because they need experience and you can't get experience because they won't give you the job, right? Exactly. Right. Well, that's or where the, that's where some of the benefits of uh, being in the capitalist area, right? Are really helpful. Like due to the fact that here in the United States, we're able to create jobs we're able to start businesses. Um, it gives us the opportunity to be able to find success in different areas where success usually would have been 10, 15, 20 years ago. Because in your, in your situation with your degree 10, 15 years ago, hands down, you would have found, found a, an occupation immediately, right? Now, the problem is, is that those opportunities are, as I mentioned, becoming scarce. And my theory, right, is that um, if you have an opportunity to be able to have a, a safety net, right, a, we'll call it a social safety net, uh, just in case you're in a situation like you, as well as millions of other people that are going through your exact same situation that, you know, went to college, had good grades, got a degree, and uh, went out to the workforce and could not find adequate uh, work, right? That situation is happening all over the place. And my theory is that if we're better able to approach those situations and to be able to see those hardships and uh, prepare for the future, because that's not going to only happen with you. If you think it's only happening with you, imagine your children or your children's children. Don't you think that they're going to have more hardship being able to find decent work and have competitive skill sets? Yeah, absolutely. Because you got to think like our parents, like our, even like grandparents, like they didn't even need, they didn't even need like a high school diploma. They could go out and get a job right away, get money, sustain a family, get a house, everything like that. Then they have kids, they come along, our parents thinking, you know, like you need an associate's degree for this, maybe a bachelor's degree, but now you're coming across things where it's a basic, I don't want to say basic job, but more basic job, which in the past you didn't need the level of education and they're looking for a minimum bachelor's degree, maybe even a master's degree. So it's forcing us to have to go to school longer Then you're taking out loans more, taking out more money. So at this rate, it's just going to keep progressing. And so when our kids come around, it's gonna be, they're going to be even more in debt. They're going to have even a harder time finding jobs and they could be more qualified than the past three generations combined. Yeah, no, I agree with you entirely. I agree with you entirely. 
Um, so yeah, man, um, you seem like a really intelligent guy. It's really unfortunate that you're unable to find a decent work placement. You sound like you're really capable. And a lot of the people that um, I usually speak to don't have the same mentality towards being able to approach uh, some of the hardships that we're experiencing here in the United States in an appropriate fashion, such as you have. Um, so yeah, if, uh, if you had the opportunity, let's say uh, Donald Trump himself was going to listen to this and you had the opportunity to tell him something, uh, especially with this election coming up, what do you think you would tell him? Uh, I would just say we got to focus on like stop focusing primarily on like the bigger cities where there's more opportunities and start focusing on like the more rural areas and creating jobs and opportunities out there because not everyone is going to has the same not everyone has the same opportunities in every place so and i'm not saying that there's going to be you have like a farm town and you're going to throw up a billion dollar company in there like no that doesn't make any sense but there could be more opportunities for people who are qualified to get out and be able to start their lives and or even restart their lives after getting fired or anything like that like there should be something out there where we can go that's not like flipping burgers or working minuscule hard work hard labor jobs you know what i'm saying yeah definitely yeah and one of the good parts about like growing up here in the south right is that you're able to see a lot of people with different cultures and ethnicities right so you're really able to see like people that have access to opportunities and resources that other people don't like one of the things that um i would like to to kind of change and one of the things that a basic income would be able to help is uh, a starting line uh and being able to equalize that starting line a lot just like you had mentioned right opportunity isn't the same in every area right and well, the problem is, is that we have some people that usually start here, right? And then other people that start like way down here and we're expected to compete for the same uh, goal, right? Now, do you right. think it's fair? Like, let's say, for instance, there's somebody that um, was in your particular situation, but he didn't have the accessibility to be able to use our capitalist fiat system to put himself in debt. He was unable to have the correct mentors. He didn't have the right environment. Do you think a basic income would have helped him in comparison to uh, to all the benefits that you were able to receive? I'm talking strictly about the starting line in life, the place where you begin, where you're able to access the benefits. Yeah, I mean... Obviously, people come from different backgrounds and some people are more well off than others and some people definitely don't have that type of opportunity. So if there was a baseline income, then it would definitely be able to benefit the people that are on the bottom. Right. It would equalize the starting line, basically, is what you're saying, right? Yeah. But it's okay, all, that's, yeah, that, it's that, all that was it right there. Thank you, man. Thank you. You've done great. Um, I'm going to leave you a link. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can contact me directly. If you want me to take down the video, of course, you can contact me directly. All right. All right, brother. All right. Good luck with everything, bro. Hey, you as well. Thanks, buddy.